All right, what we have here today is a World of Warships ranked match on the Sea of Fortune map. And uh, this is a bronze match, so we're uh, tier six and seven. It looks like everybody's tier seven today. Um, one of the things that's difficult about this map is that it's got, it's like domination mode. So there's three cap circles that you need to capture, but the difficult part about it is where they're located. See, A and B actually overlap. So they really want to force everybody into these little island gaps here and uh it's just a really dangerous place to be um i'm in a battleship in this match so what i really want to do is so there's a couple ways that that teams go about this one uh i've seen teams that send all their all their firepower straight up the gut in here and uh they're able to work as a team and and kill as many you know kill enough people that it's it's it doesn't really matter whether you capture the points or not uh, you just out firepower everybody. That hap that works most of the time. That's not my favorite way to go about it. Personally, in a battleship, I like to kind of head somewhat in this direction. So it gives me the option of uh, cross-firing on enemies that might come into the cap or might be sitting back here or back here or uh, to act as a deterrent for those that are, are looking to get into the second cap here. Um, that's just the way I like to play this particular map, and you'll see as we get going... Um, that's where I, I head when I go, go through here. Um, playing the West Virginia 44. Uh, this, is a, this is a ship that I feel is kind of like a, a Tier 7 um, Massachusetts. It's uh, heavily focused on secondaries, but also has uh, big turrets and a, a quick cool down on the heel. So it's kind of a brawler, uh, which is good for these close quarter ranked matches. Battle starts. You can see, see we start out here. We've got three battleships in the back row. I was going to angle, like I said, towards the right here. Then I kind of realized that the Sharnors to my right was um, wanting to go forward, so I'm going to let him go in front of me and continue on to that position that I talked about earlier. And you can see right away that my team is kind of taking this, the flanks approach, instead of going right up the gut here. It's interesting that this is not a very long match. The first part of this match seems like nothing happens for quite a while, and then all of a sudden everything happens really quick. So I'm going to have to probably pause a couple times and and explain what I saw and what what actually happened, what was going on. Uh, the Sharn horse, as you can see, is kind of pushing forward. I'm going to get in behind him, follow the Lazo over towards C. Uh, enemy is already in A and B, so you know about where he is, and I was just spotted, so I, I ping on the map where he must be if he just spotted me. Although it's probably pretty obvious, considering where enemy force detected. where those caps intersect, that he's right there. Uh, he is in the Leningrad, which is a very fast destroyer, so he got there quicker than anybody else. Our Bliska is actually... This is I didn't realize this until I watched the replay. This guy here, he's actually going backwards. Uh, he, he got scared uh, when those cap circles started getting captured so early on, so he started reversing. Not sure I'd go that far. Pop my spotter plane here to get just a little bit more distance on the shot. Figured maybe that Colorado's not paying attention. And there's the Leningrad. He did show up. He's captured both points already. So the enemy has A and B capture points. Uh, we're st still kind of trying to get in position. I'm not really sure what the Helena wants to do, but it looks like he's coming in to the side. And then I noticed some torpedoes coming my way from the Leningrad. Turn towards Torpedoes him deport. to uh, see if I can minimize the damage here. Torpedoes, get hit by ahead. as few torpedoes as possible, but uh, luckily the Leningrad torps only go about eight kilometers, so they run out before they even get to me. 
And this is that crossfire I was talking about. I can I can see you guys on the other side of the map. Giving me good broadside target. I'm not as far up as I really wanted to be at this point, but those torpedoes slowed me down. And I'm going to pause here because now I'm going to show you our our team has decided to push straight into the cap and push the enemies out. Um, so as you can see right here, the, Elena, the Helena and the and the Bliskaviska came around the side and came in between these two islands. The the, fit, the Prince Idol Frederick just pushed W and just kind of went in. They pushed everybody out of these caps, and they're going to try and take the caps instead. Um, yeah, it's not not a bad idea. If you're going to do that, it's a good idea to do it with more than one ship. And they have started to capture the at least the B cap I can see from here. It looks like A as well, which means the Leningrad's out of there. But here's a problem now because, as you can see, the enemy team also sent some ships around the outside. So now they've Slaughter got ships here, here and here, and our guys in the in the cap are kind of surrounded. I'm trying to help those guys in the cap out by by shooting those guys coming in, but uh, I don't have a very good angle. I don't have a very good view of them because of this island. And right there, the Heinrich, who decided to push all the way up into the cap and face all of these ships by himself, has died. Uh, our Bliska did a nice job of using his torpedoes to take out the this the battleship, the Sarn horse that was coming in this way, the enemy. So that's kind of a trade there. But now our Helene is in a, in a bad spot because he's got battleships on both sides of him both sides of him, and he's sitting in the middle of the cap. And then our Helena went down. Like, uh, you can see he was just in a bad position. A, a light cruiser in the middle of two battleships, there's no way to angle, there's no way to escape. He was just in trouble. So now we've lost two ships in that cap even though we took the cap, and the Bliska is taking the second cap. Being a little unsure is what the enemy is going to do. Are they going to continue over to my cap, or are they going to push back into A? I go ahead and position myself into C to be able to deal with either one of those possibilities. Um, I like the position of my Sharn horse over here. I like that he, he took this flank and he's going to sit over here and he can either go this way if somebody comes into the cap or if somebody continues to come around. Like right now it looks like the, the cruiser is going to come around the island so he could meet him here and he will counter that cruiser easily. Um, Lazo, I wasn't really sure what he was doing <laughs> at this point. Um, as we'll see towards the end, it was a good thing that he took this position but at this point in the match I was... It seemed like he's a little bit useless over here. He he's, he keeps looking for these guys to get spotted, and we're having trouble getting those guys spotted because the Bliska is trying to remain unspotted. Uh, this is an interesting exchange. Me and the other West Virginia on the other team exchange gunfire here, and we each take the exact same amount off of each other. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Colorado takes more off of me because he overmatches me. Okay, now at this point, it seems like both teams are pushing in towards the center a little bit. Uh, our Bliska has, has kited out without taking B cap. He's hiding behind an island so that he doesn't get killed by the Leningrad. Uh, I'm able to set a little cheeky fire with my secondaries there on the other West Virginia. But here's another thing, is the Bliska, the Bliska Viska, because that's how you pronounce it, he probably makes a mistake by going back this way. Um, I'm thinking he probably should have come back around here to help support us a little bit um, because he's got a heavy cruiser, a Mayoko, and a Leningrad, both good gunboats that are going to counter him, um, even though he's a gunboat. The two against one is never good odds, especially if one of them is a cruiser. So he probably makes a slight mistake by 
getting spotted here on the other side of that island. Um, and I also would like to point out that this Moonshin, who I thought at one point was going to go around this side of the island and get met by the Sharn Horse, decided instead to go straight into the cap. Uh, and I still am not really sure why. Um, other than maybe he just thought he needed to be doing something. The enemy team has taken but the uh, you'll see in a second that, that that's a decision that costs him dearly. Now the Bliska has gone down, uh, as I predicted he might. It's it's five ships to three, and they have both caps, and I'm taking the second one. And there's the Munchen, and I thought to myself, well, hello, Mr. Cruiser, what are you doing there? As I take my shot at him and lead him. Now I have this West Virginia to worry about on this side of me. The ship is on fire! And it's very lucky for me that the Colorado was on the other side of that island, kind of hiding out. Because if if it was me against both of them, it would have been a much more difficult task. But at this point, um, I can go one on one with the West Virginia, who already has lower health than I do. We've destroyed but what I am worried about, as I pause this here, is as soon as I do that, I, I start to think about both of these ships, the Leningrad and the Mayoko, have really good torpedoes. And I was kind of afraid that they might have torped into the gap as they went by. So I start to angle away from them. And that also puts me in a good position to angle my ship away from the, or uh, towards the Colorado. Um, and not give him a good broadside target. Maybe he was a little quick on the damage repair there, but I don't like being on fire sometimes. It just bothers me. So the Colorado is kiting away at this point. Um, our Sharn Horse is, is pushing solved, into sir. B cap to cap on, on that cap behind us. We took C just now. And now, at this point, it, as we can see, it was a good thing that the Lazo took this position because now he and I can both take on this Colorado together. Um, I might have been able to take him on my own, but it was sure nice to have him there too. And especially as you can see, he overmatched my bow right there with his big old American guns. And it's right about this point that I realize that the Leningrad has come all the way around and he's shooting at me from the other side. So I swing my secondaries around to the Leningrad. A little bit worried about him. But he decides to focus his fire on the Laza. Now the Mayoko goes down with, from our Sharn Horse, and the Sharn Horse also goes down from that, but they torpedoed each other in those caps over there. So it's now it's two on two. Laza torpedoed the Colorado, and the Leningrad is going to see that just got his uh, commander skill to pop off a heel there and he tried to smoke up to try and get away but my secondaries were in the air and they got him I tell you guys I did not expect to win this match when I pushed into C cap we were down five to three without any caps and then I pushed in thinking okay this is it I'm just gonna go out in a blaze of glory uh, as you can see we got 122,000 damage um, Three kills, 100 or 404 secondary hits, capture, devastating strike, um, close quarters expert, and then the, uh, I think that's the high caliber, yeah, high caliber award. So, turned out to be a good match. It was a lot of fun. Every once in a while, you run into one of these ranked matches that uh, just surprises you. Um, like I said, it was pretty boring for about five minutes, and then all of a sudden, everything everything broke loose. Hello, take care. I will see you next time.